hump day halfway through the week. Thanks for being with us here on First Take. Skip Bayless, Molly Karam, and look who's back, your boy. Bill on the music, Stephen A., good to see you. How we doing? What's up, y'all? What's up? Good morning. How y'all doing? I missed you, man. Wasn't the same without <laughs> you. <laughs> well, you know what? I miss you too, bro. Let's get it Thank, on. Thanks I'm for back. getting up early today and getting back Tell to, me about to it. New York. Tell me about Way it. to go. Tell me about it. All I'm right. here. I'm here. Yes. Let's roll. Great to have you back. Let's get into it. How about those Cavaliers? Let's talk about it. So Cleveland became only the fifth team ever to win their first nine games of the postseason after crushing the Raptors in game one of the East Finals. Last season, LeBron, of course, didn't have Kyrie Irving for most of the finals and Kevin Love for most of the playoffs. But the Cavs are rolling now at full force. Skip, is this LeBron's best supporting cast he's ever had? I say no. And yet, Stephen A. Smith, I continue to hear again and again, I even heard it on this show in your absence yesterday, that this is clearly LeBron's best supporting cast. I'm sorry, I'm not going to overreact. As sensationally as this bunch is clicking together, Kyrie, Kevin Love, LeBron, all together, blending, clicking, in rhythm, I, I get all that. But it's been against Detroit, and Atlanta, and now a Toronto team that I think you would agree from what I saw of you on SportsCenter should be embarrassed by the way it played or did not play defense last night, especially in the paint. Is that fair to say? Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, oh Lord. yes, Lord. Okay, so I can't overreact. To me, I'm still going to favor slightly those two teams that helped LeBron win his first and second rings in Miami. And you know what the bottom line to me is, and you know how big a fan I am, Stephen A., but I'm sorry. Those two teams had a guy named Dwayne Wade, a proven champion, a proven superstar, riding shotgun with LeBron James, sometimes teaching him the ropes of how to get it done at the highest level in the NBA Finals. And obviously, this current team has no Dwayne Wade. As gifted as Kyrie is, he managed to make it through one game of the NBA Finals last year. As talented as Kevin Love is, and as much as he's clicking with the other two right now, didn't play in the Finals last year. Obviously didn't play in a whole lot of the playoffs. And I look at this current Cavs roster, nobody who gets to play consistently has a ring. So let's go back to 2012. How many times... Did LeBron get huge help from unexpected sources in those finals? Remember this in 2012, Stephen A., after they lost game one in Oklahoma City? Remember Shane Battier? How big did he come up in game two? Made five threes. They go home, game three. Dwayne Wade was huge in that game with 25 points. That, that was when Dwayne Wade was playing at a very high level and still himself, although I thought he returned to that level this year. Remember game four in Miami of 2012, the Mario Chalmers Memorial game? When all of a sudden Mario scored 25, and by the way, Mario had a college ring that he won for Kansas, as you know, against Memphis in the NCAA Finals. He scored 25 in that game, including 12 in the fourth quarter and five in the last 45 seconds. Was huge. Closeout game of that, that series. Game five in Miami. Mike Miller, who was on our show the other day, made seven threes in eight attempts, seven out of eight. Where did that come from? He could barely walk and he made seven threes. Let's move quickly to 2013, the next year that LeBron won a ring. Down uh, two games to one in San Antonio. Dwayne Wade was huge in that game four against my Spurs with 32 points and even that series at two games all. And then let's fast forward to game six. I must bring it up one last painful time, if, if, you, if I may. LeBron James turned it over three times in the last three minutes. He missed the tying three with about eight seconds left, and we know what happened after that. Ray Allen made the greatest clutch shot I've ever seen to tie that game, send it to overtime. LeBron was great in the game seven, but again, Ray Allen, who came to the Heat that year with the ring that he had won in Boston, so he had championship pedigree, saved or helped save LeBron's legacy with that shot that he made. Now let's look at this team. Is there anybody else that you really trust at the highest level against a Golden State or Oklahoma City at the next level? I don't know for sure. I love Kyrie Irving. I like Kevin Love. I, I like Tristan. But do you trust them under fire at the highest level? 
you know, I, I don't. I'm, I mean, I, can't, I don't know yet. I got to see them under that kind of fire before I say, oh, they've got championship pedigree because none of them have proven it at the highest level. So ha I think we're overrating this supporting cast. I think you're looking at it all wrong. First of all, when you talk about Dwayne Wade, who's one of the ultimate closers the game has ever seen, of course they haven't proven they have that on their roster, Skip. Nobody can deny that. When you look at a Chris Bosh, uh, who's an 11-time All-Star, we know what he brings to the table. Ray Allen, one of the greatest shooters in NBA history. Mike Miller, who can't be underrated. Shane Battier, et cetera, et cetera. Mario Chalmers, you throw him up in there. You could take some of the uh, smaller level players, like the Norris Coles of the world. World and, 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 you know, a uh, bird man and all of those guys. Udonis Haslam was an age old veteran, finds a way to keep himself relevant year after year after year. When you look at it from that perspective, you say to yourself, OK, LeBron had a better cast of players in Miami. But what you're missing, Skip, is that even though I agree with you, I understand the point that other people are trying to make when they say that this supporting cast is better. You know why, Skip? Because what we're talking about are individuals that he played with in Miami that stepped up at the big moments. Remember, throughout those NBA Finals, before Mike Miller exploded with seven three-pointers in a, in a closeout game five against the Oklahoma City Thunder to deliver LeBron James' first title, he was struggling up to that point in the series. There were times in other NBA playoff games or the Finals where other individuals they struggled. LeBron essentially carried the Miami Heat to that, to that precipice before somebody stepped up and closed the deal to help him deliver the goods. With this particular situation in Cleveland, what happens is you have a bevy of individuals that are balling, and because they're balling, LeBron doesn't have to do but so much, thereby being very, very rested because of the contribution he's getting against others. Now, granted, I've said that what you said, Detroit, Atlanta, now Toronto, not exactly the greatest test in the world, although Detroit and Atlanta are good quality teams, exceptionally well coached. They're on a come up. They haven't arrived yet. And don't get me started with Toronto because you know how we both love Dwayne Casey. Yeah. But they are simply overmatched. <sighs> it's just that simple. Their strengths are bigger strengths for Cleveland which nullifies and neutralizes whatever they're going to throw at you. They'll be lucky if they win a game in this series. With that being said, look at what Cleveland is doing. Walking into last night's game, Channing Fry shoot 57% from, from three-point range, 12 of 21, before last night. Kyrie Irving at 53%, 28 of 52 from three-point range. J.R. Smith shooting close, about 50% from three-point range. Richard Jefferson up there above 45% from three-point range. I mean, you've got about Iman Shumpert was hitting 46% yep. from three-point range. So I just gave you five guys that are shooting better than 45% from three for LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. You're moving the basketball. You're trusting one another. You're sharing the basketball. You've got Kevin Love more involved and looking like an all-star again. So when you look at it from that perspective, that's not something we saw in Miami. We saw Mark LeBron carrying a hefty load and those guys closing the deal for him in pivotal moments when for one reason or another he was unable to do so. Here, they're not even allowing it to get to that point because the other guys are carrying a load en route to those closing moments, thereby not just nullifying, you know, the, the figurative yeah. closing moments because it doesn't really exist because they're blowing people out. That's what you got here. That's why people are looking at this a bit differently than they looked at Miami. Okay, I, I get everything you just said. In fact, I'll, I'll go this far. I'll, I'll say that on just pure, raw, talent, maybe not proven talent, this team is overall, top to bottom, more talented than those Miami teams. I'm not okay. sure about it, but I'm going to give you that by about that much. But right. you realize I'm, I'm actually, ironically, I'm, I'm trying to defend LeBron here because I think it's unfair to him right now to say, oh, he's got his best supporting cast. Because you can do it on paper, you can do it talent, you can do all-star appearances or whatever you want to do, just on pure talent. 
but you can't do it on pedigree. So in the end, I, I keep saying this, I, I can't in my memory think of another superstar who has, an, has had an easier path to the finals than LeBron James is having right now, because to your point, he can put it a little bit on cruise control. Not that he ever takes plays off, but, but he doesn't have to go all out in these games because he does have such an array of snipers and everybody is clicking and hitting threes at such a high percentage. But you know and I know what's about to happen. Pretty soon, it's gonna be Oklahoma City or it's gonna be Golden State. And then LeBron is going to have to take it way up to the, whatever he has left, he's gonna to have to play at that level to beat one of those two teams. So my point is, I don't know if the guys riding shotgun with LeBron right now are as trustworthy as Dwayne was and yeah. even Chris Bosh and Ray Allen and Mike Miller and Shane Battier. I'm not sure well, about that. Well, the chances are they're not as trustworthy, Skip. They have to prove that. That's There's correct. There's no question. But the flip side to it is that all you can go by is the body of work that they're putting on display now that they've been in this situation. Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving are healthy. J.R. Smith has settled. He ain't running the streets anymore. The man's married. He's going home. His definition of a recreational activity doesn't have anything to do with the nightclub anymore. It has something to do with golf, but that's about it. Right. And so when you look at so. it from that perspective, then, you, then you've got the Iman Shumperts of the world and others. Um, and Channing Fry's a huge pickup. He is. And you also have to remember that when, when, when LeBron James goes to the bench, then he comes off that bench, Skip. This is a guy, and I was speaking to the, you know, one of the uh, color commentary guys that does the Cavs games, Jim Jones. He played in the league years ago. Really great guy. Very knowledgeable. And he was just talking to me about how LeBron James comes off the bench. Uh, you know, when, when, he, when he gets some rest, and he comes off the bench, and he's usually on the floor with Channing Fry and Kevin Love because you've got snipers out there. You put Kevin Love on the block, okay, or you put LeBron on the block, and everybody collapses on him, and then all of a sudden you got Kevin Love running to the weak side. You've got Kyrie overloaded on the weak side. you got to pick your poison. What are you going to do with these guys? All I'm saying to you is that whatever the case may be, the reason why you have people debating as to whether or not this is a better supporting cast for LeBron is because they're looking at the workload that he's having okay. to put in now All right. comparable to what he used to have to do. And remember, Skip, one of the reasons why he fell out of love with Miami, although from what I'm hearing, he's kind of falling back in love with it. One of the reasons he fell a little out of love with Miami is because he carried the workload. There was times he came to a game, Skip, was going to play and shoot around and then come an hour before game time, he finds out that Dwayne Wade can't play. These are the kind of things he doesn't have to deal with nope. anymore in Cleveland. And that goes a long way. All of those things contribute to the debate about this issue. Yeah, but in the end, are you switching now? Do you, do you think this can be a sweep? I said it would be in five, but I have my doubts now. Well, I, 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 have, I have serious doubts, but I look at Valanchunas. If he comes back in, a, in game three, on their home court in, in Toronto with that crowd, it could they could make it interesting for a game. I said before the series, this would probably end in five, possibly in four. Yeah. I'm going to stick to that, but I got to tell you, Toronto, it, it, listen, they had a great season. They've got good young talent. They are simply overmatched. They are. They're too small, and they don't have the depth and the strength of their team. Kyrie. Yep. I see no way Toronto wins this series, and it's highly likely that they'll even, that I, I, highly unlikely they'll even win a game. But I'm holding out hope that Valentunas can make it interesting for one afternoon. That's about the best. The, I'm with the, you know, you. Canada can get. So Can't be any we agree. Than that. Bottom line, LeBron is going to be as rested physically and mentally yes. as he ever has been going into an NBA final. Not mentally. Not mentally. Physically, yes. Mentally is different, Skip, because I'm making the case that LeBron is under more pressure outside of chasing his first title. He has never been under more pressure than he is right now this year. 
last year, Golden State, potentially fraudulent title because he didn't have Kevin Love okay. and Kyrie. And then you got Steph winning MVPs and stealing all the shine. Now you hear LeBron commenting all the time. The, the, the king, meaning marketing, off the court, et cetera, et cetera, has got a lot at stake. Another loss to Steph Curry could really diminish, to at least to okay. some degree, mm -hmm. some of that stature. Assuming they beat OKC, which is not a guarantee, yeah. Okay, what you just said is very debatable, and I will save my answer for a little later in the show when we sure. address that topic. Oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot. That's okay. No, that's all good. good. We got it. But that was the, no the Cavs' right. largest playoff win in franchise history, so they're now 13-0 when all three are healthy. But let's go out west where things were not as easy.